Hello, Lena. Welcome to Mr. Quaker's Teachers. In this lesson, I'll be providing a detailed analysis of Peter Potter's poem, A Consumer's Report. It's one of the longer or one of the longest poems in the anthology for the GCSE or IGCSE for 2023 to 2025. Um, I'll speak about the themes in the poem, the figures of speech, the point of view, the poet stone, the mood of the poem, stylistic devices, you know, other um, points or, you know, literary devices that Potter uses to strikingly present the poetic voices reduction of life to a product. So essentially, that's what this um, poem is about, about this poetic voice that goes on this rant, critical, is very, very critical about life. And then towards the end of it, he says, I'll buy it, you know. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's quite um, an interesting poem that tells us that people think of life as a product and so they, they are unable to you know maximize it and then gain the most from it let's dive in now let me begin by speaking about the poet peter potter he was born in brisbane australia in 1929 he was educated at the Anglican Church Grammar School, then known as the Church of England Grammar School. He left school at 18 to work as a trainee journalist at the Courier Mail. Now, however, he only lasted a year with the paper before he was dismissed. He emigrated to England in 1951. Now, on the boat, he met the future novelist Jill Neville. Potter was portrayed in Neville's first book, The Fall Girl, which was written in 1966. After two, two suicide attempts, he returned to Brisbane, again Australia. Now, ten months later, he was back in England. In 1955, he began attending meetings of, quote, the group. It was his association with the group that allowed him to publish his first collection. This is a very, very fascinating history, but our main focus is actually the analysis of the poem. And that's what we are going to jump in next. Now, this is how the poem appears. In the first stanza is three lines. And then the, the, the other um, stanza, or the second stanza, stanza is about 48 lines. I saw a variation, I saw some variation between how the poem appears in the um, IGCSE anthology and how it appears um, online. I chose to, for the only poem, um, choose the online one because um, it sort of makes a bit more sense to me. And maybe the um, people at the um, office or the CIE can, can look at that, but you know, um, if it's a mistake. I mean, we, we just exempt it from the analysis. Now, this is how the poem appears. Let me begin the analysis by reading the poem. A Consumer's Report by Peter Potter. The name of the product I tasted is life. I've completed the form you sent me and understand that my answers are confidential. I had it as a gift. I didn't feel much while using it. In fact, I think I'd have liked to be more excited it seemed gentle on the hands, but left an embarrassing deposit behind. It was not economical, and I have used much more than I thought. I suppose I have about half left, but it's difficult to tell. Although the instructions are fairly large, there are so many of them. I don't know which to follow, especially as they seem to contradict each other. I'm not sure such a thing should be put in the way of children. It's difficult to think of a purpose for it. One of my friends says, it's just to keep the maker in a job. Also, the price is much too high. Things are piling up fast. After all, the world got by for a thousand million years without this. Do we need it now? Incidentally, please ask your man to stop calling me the respondent. I don't like the sound of it. There seems to be a lot of different labels. Sizes and colors should be uniform. The shape is awkward. It's waterproof, but not heat resistant. It doesn't keep yet it's very difficult to get rid of. Whenever they make it cheaper, they seem to put less in. If you say you don't want it, then it's delivered anyway. I'd agree it's a popular product. It's got into the language. People even say they're on the side of it. Personally, I think it's overdone. A small thing people are ready to behave badly about. I think we should take it for granted. If it's expert are called philosophers or market researchers or historians, we shouldn't care. We are the consumers and the last lawmakers. So finally, how about it? But the question of Best Buy, I'd like to leave until I get a competitive product you said you'd said. 
Now, one of the first things that jumps at me at the poem is the tone of the poetic voice. For me, he comes across as very critical, someone who does not like life. In fact, you're going to see the way I speak about this tone in more detail, even though I'm going to do it in this analysis, in the elements of literature analysis of this um, um, poem. That, there I talk about the themes, I just um, highlight them, retweeting like in, in note form. So my advice is that please, listen to this analysis. Also listen to the elements of literature analysis that accompanies this poem in the course. You find it at Mr. Quicket Teaches. If you're, you know, listening to it already at Mr. Quicket Teaches, great. If not, if you're listening to it um, on YouTube or any other channel, please go to Mr. Quicket Teaches. You can purchase only this analysis or you can purchase the entire collection. I mean, depending on which one you, you want to do. Now, the analysis itself. Now, Potter opens the poem strikingly by declaring with a rather direct tone that suggests that he is likely answering a question that has been asked him with a statement in the first line, the name of the product I tasted is life. Now, observe that life is italized, but I'm going to come to that. Now, it could be that Potter is the one that is speaking or the poetic voice. I choose to, you know, think of a poetic voice because maybe Potter is just recounting the experience of, a, of the poetic voice. Now, the first two words of the line, the name, creates the impression that if the reader could see the cover of the product, they will see the word life stamped on it, on, the, on it as a label or a product name. Now, that's the effect that the word, the name of the product I tasted gives. Now, his language, that the poetic voice's language, is also very direct, especially his use of the expression, the name of the product. Now, why do I, what do I mean by it's direct? It's direct because it tells that he knows the name and the characteristics of the product that he trialed. You know, it is something that he, tri he trialed. He was, it was given to him to, like, try. Also, the opening line of the poem is arresting because the poetic voice uses the word product as a metaphor for life. So remember in my analysis, the initial introduction of the analysis, I talk about the fact that he reduces life to a product. That's what we see with the poetic voice. So he reduces life to a product. So that's a metaphor. Now, and the use of the first person um, pronoun I to show that the poetic voice is speaking about his personal experience. So the poetic voice is speaking about his personal experience in the first person. Now, furthermore, his characterization of life as a product creates the impression that it is artificial. So it is something that's artificial, or something that is manufactured in a factory or laboratory. You know, something like that. Maybe in some company somewhere. So it's not a product that is natural. That's the key whether there was not a, cre um, a creation or something that exists naturally. It was created somewhere. That's the, 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 that's the kind of idea that is presented by the word product. Now, tested is also a very effective word because it presents life as something that can be trialed and retained if it is deemed unsatisfactory. So, you can trial life and then if you think that life is unsatisfactory, well, I'll ditch it. Now, tested also suggests that the poet was given a chance to use life to see its pros and cons, so advantages and disadvantages. If you're testing, you know, like a test ride, if you're testing a, a, a car, for example, you're checking. How does the gear work? How does the, the brake work? How does, you know, how does the car feel? So that's the, the, the idea that is presented by this word, tasted. So he tested it. Not tasted, sorry. Tasted with your, with your mouth, but then tested. Right? So tested also suggests that the poet was given the chance to use life and see the advantages and disadvantages. Whether he likes it or not, is it something you're going to like or something you're not going to like? And then he can return it if he finds it unsatisfactory. That's, you see, just that word there, tested, that's the effect that that's the, that word has. So if you're asked, for example, how Peter, uh, Potter strikingly presents the, the poetic voice's attitude to life, you can talk about, you know, the certain words that uses. If you test something, it means, let me have a, a, a taste. You taste it and then it's like, well, I don't like it. Tasted also is in the past tense. Now, observe the tense there, very, very important. Now, this tells that He's recounting a past event, something that he's already tried. Finally, Porter's characterization and tone in the line makes life a more relatable concept because he presents it as a tangible item. I mean, when we talk about life, essentially we are talking about people or somebody. But then the way he does it here is like something that's tangible, something you can touch. 
and feel. It's a product, not like some, you know, um, abstract idea of sorts. It's something that you can touch and feel. Now, he ends the line. That's the first line with a comma, which indicates a short pause. Now, in the second um, line of the stanza, he continues, I have completed the form you sent me. So this is another revelation as well. So this suggests that there has been an earlier interaction between the poetic voice and the unseen persona, the one with who he refers to as you. Remember, when he says you there, means he's speaking to somebody in the second person. So the use of the word you there creates the effect that he's speaking to someone in the second person. Now, it's important because when he says completed the form, it also creates the impression that the poet or the poetic voice was sent a questionnaire. You know, it's like some sort of like um, a program or something. He was sent a questionnaire that he had to answer and then he had to feel. And he's filled it and then he sent it. So why the final two words of the word of the line, sorry, sent me tells that it was delivered to him earlier. Now, the poetic voice flows into the third line of the stanza with the enjambment. You observe that we see that in the flow of words from the second line to the third without pause. Before continuing or adding and understand my answers are confidential. Now, he's saying here that in the first um, stanza essentially, he's telling us, he's telling us the C. It is important that confidentiality, non-disclosure agreement. Now, the use of enjambment presents his impatience to communicate that how he wants his response to be treated. Moreover, the first two words of the line, that's the third line, and understand, are telling because they expose that Potter or the poetic voice is indirectly warning the absent persona. Remember, the person that he referred to as you in the second line of the <laughs> Of the of the of the of this stanza, he's warning him indirectly that see, treat my response with extreme care. I don't want my my response to be publicized. It should be kept confidential. And understand also sounds like a threat, and tells that the one with whom he's speaking that they should doubly treat his answers with utmost secrecy. So, do not share it. I, handle it with extreme care that's what it says and understand so the form you sent me and understand that my i understand this this is the conclusion i've come to this is what you made me believe additionally potter's use of the plural answer so that my answers also shows that he gave a wide-ranging response so again you can think about potter as the one that is speaking or the poetic voice but i would say to be on a safer side it's the poetic voice that is speaking so he gave a wide-ranging response that was very open and frank. So it was very sincere, his, his heart. And we're going to see that in the second stanza of the poem. The expression, my answers are confidential, shows that the poetic voice is very keen on protecting his privacy. So he wants his privacy to be well protected. He does not want the information about him to be shared publicly. But it is shared. I mean, we see that in the second stanza. My answers are confidential also shows that the poetic voice wants the listener, that's the person with whom he's speaking to, to remember that they do the right thing. You have to do the right thing. You understand that my answers are confidential. My answers are confidential also suggests that he was very candid with his response, so he does not want it or does, does not want his response to be circulated. Hello, Lena. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson so far. This is a sample video analysis of this poem. To access the full analysis, purchase it or the entire course with detailed analysis of all the 15 poems, the elements of literature in each poem, and IGCSE style questions, both passage-based and general. There are also A-star quality sample essays as well at mrquakersteaches.com. Find the links in the description. See you in class.